and welcome back to another video. My name is CJ the Populist New Yorker and today we're going to be continuing our alternate history series in which we analyze uh, alternate history election scenarios, mostly presidential. I haven't done any statewide ones yet. In today's video we're going to be focusing on a alternate history matchup between Donald Trump and Joe Biden in the 2016 election. So not 2020, 2016. So in this hypothetical situation, Somehow, Joe Biden decides he's going to run. It was actually widely speculated in 2016 he was going to run. His son, Bo Biden, passed away. That was one of the largest factors, I think, into why he did not run back in 2016. And But in this scenario, either that doesn't happen or Joe Biden decides to run anyway, uh, and he gets through the Democratic primary process. I'm not really going to go into that. that video. This video is not really about that. That'll be a video maybe in the future. Nonetheless, Joe Biden becomes the Democratic nominee on the Republican side. All else stays the same. Donald Trump steamrolls the Republican primary field and ends up as their nominee as well. So I've filled out the safe states for either candidates in this election scenario. States like Indiana and Missouri, uh, they were states that were likely states back in 2012. I think even with a Joe Biden-Trump matchup, they would still be safe for Donald Trump. Uh, and I have all the safe blue states as well for Joe Biden. These are states that either candidate will win by 12 points or more. Uh, in traditional fashion with these videos, we'll start with the West Coast and move over east, starting with the state of Nevada. Uh, in the real 2016 election scenario, Nevada was a pretty tight state, a uh, state that Hillary Clinton won by 2.4%. Uh, Donald Trump largely benefited from the fact that a lot of the vote was taken up by third party candidates such as Gary Johnson, Evan McMullen, stuff like that. I would reckon in this scenario between Donald Trump and Joe Biden, there would not be a significant third party factor. Clearly one of the nominees would be a lot more favorable than the other. If we take a look at a uh, article from Gallup, which is posted on November 8th, 2016, uh, Trump and Hillary Clinton were historically unfavorable. Uh, Donald Trump was 61% viewed him unfavorably, and Hillary Clinton was viewed 52% unfavorably. Both these candidates broke records for being the most unfavorable party nominees in polling history. This time, however, Joe Biden is probably going to be viewed at favorably. As vice president, he had a very high approval rating. Um, obviously, that approval rating would not be so high once he actually threw his ring his hat in the ring, rather, and decided to run against Donald Trump. But I think ultimately, he would still be viewed a lot more favorably than Donald Trump. He's not as scandal-ridden as Hillary Clinton was in 2016. Uh, there's not a lot of things you can stick to him. Although, again, Joe Biden has scandals of his own, so does Donald Trump. But there clearly is a difference here. So if we go back to 2012, Obama was able to win the state of Nevada 52 to 45 uh, Donald Trump actually did slightly worse than Mitt Romney in the state, percentage-wise. Uh, Obama did better. Now, I think both candidates, uh, Trump and Biden, would improve. However, I think Biden would improve a lot more massively on his margin. I think Donald Trump maybe would get 46%. And again, this is taking into account the third-party factor. Uh, Donald Trump's message in 2016, I think, really resonated because of who he was running against. Um, it was not a referendum on Donald Trump. 2016 was a referendum on Hillary Clinton. Uh, not really necessarily the Obama administration as much, but Hillary Clinton as a candidate and as a person and as a politician. And that's why Trump won in 2016. And one of the big reasons he won, he ran a very uh, good campaign, objectively speaking, and he was able to win. But I don't think Donald Trump's message would have resonated nearly as much with Joe Biden on the Democratic side. I think the state of uh, Nevada would probably go to Joe Biden by around seven points in this scenario. Uh, and this also is accounting for his favorability ratings as well. If we go down to the state of Arizona. Uh, Arizona in 2012, which was the last election before 2016, uh, went to Romney by around nine points. Uh, these numbers aren't accurate. New York Times, for whatever reason, didn't update the final results on their map. I really should just be using the Wikipedia map, but uh, it was around a nine point margin for Mitt Romney. And Mitt Romney did very well in suburban counties like Maricopa. Uh, he did well in Pima County, only losing it by six points. If we go to the real 2016 election results, uh, Trump only got a plurality in the state of Arizona. It was a 48 to 44% margin. 
Uh, he did very poorly in Maricopa County. He did uh, poorly in Pima County. These are the two most populous counties in the state. I think ultimately, at the time of 2016, I think Trump is favored to win the state of Arizona, but I think it would be a very close race. Um, Arizona is tricky uh, to gauge because I think Trump could probably win the state by around two points, but it would be very close. Again, Donald Trump was not a very popular uh, candidate at the time. Joe Biden was a fairly likable VP. Of course, Arizona, I think, would stay red because at the time it was a very anti-Obama state, uh, you know, very moderate Republican state, but they certainly didn't like Obama, didn't like Obamacare, didn't really like the Obama administration at all. I think they would do enough to tie Biden to it. And I think there would be just enough Republicans to hold their nose and vote for Trump in this scenario that it would actually end up staying red. I think the reason it went uh, blue in 2020 was mostly due to uh, the four years that Trump was in office, coronavirus, uh, you know, rhetoric more so. I think at this time, Trump was more of a clean slate. He was very bombastic, but I still think there'd be enough Republicans that would vote for him uh, thinking he would be. Uh, I, I guess more moderate once he got into office. Uh, Colorado, not a whole lot would change that much. I actually think Colorado would be a likely uh, blue state. Um, Trump was able to muster uh, 43% in the state of Colorado. I think he would probably do a little bit better. I think he can get 44 in this hypothetical scenario, maybe even 45. Uh, but again, this is this is on the backs that Trump is a clean slate and uh, Biden is the nominee, he would massively outperform Hillary Clinton. I think this could be as much as, uh, as a 10-point margin, you know, a 54-44 type scenario for Joe Biden, which at the time is a huge swing from 2016, which is only a 51-46 margin. I think Biden would improve on Obama massively in that regard, even improving Obama's 2008 numbers uh, just because of Trump's sheer unpopularity. Uh, New Mexico, I think in this scenario, um, would probably be a safe state. I think again, now New Mexico is actually redder than Colorado now, at least from the 2020 election results. But at the time, Colorado was more red than New Mexico. I think again, four years of demographic change, four years of suburbs getting bluer, uh, four years of college educated whites getting bluer. I think that's the reason why you saw a 13 point margin in Colorado in 2020 you would not see the same margin back in 2016. A lot has happened in four years, which is why some of these states are going to look a little odd as we fill out the map, because you have to keep in mind how people were thinking back in 2016. So I, I think New Mexico would probably be state safe. It'd probably be on the lower side of safe, maybe like 12 points. Trump would probably get 42% of the vote. Uh, Biden would probably get maybe 54%, the rest going to third parties. New Mexico has always had a decent third party showing. Uh, in this scenario, Gary Johnson probably still does run, but he's not nearly as uh, successful or impactful as uh, you don't have two nominees that are universally disliked by the electorate. You only have one that is very disliked, and you have one that you know is somewhat popular at this time uh, in the election. Moving on to the state of Texas, I don't think a whole lot would change in Texas in this scenario. I think it would be a likely blue state. Uh, it wouldn't. Donald Trump would not be in jeopardy of losing the state. There's a lot of old-fashioned Bushite uh, neoconservative Republicans in Texas, but as we saw in 2016 and 2020, a lot of them held their nose and voted for Trump anyway because he was their nominee, because they agreed with him the most on the issues, uh, even if they did not necessarily like his character uh, as a candidate or the way he ran his campaign or his rhetoric or anything like that. They'd still vote for him. Uh, Biden would probably do a little bit better in the suburbs uh, than Hillary Clinton. Excuse me, he'd do better in the rural areas than Hillary Clinton. I think the suburbs would stay about the same. Uh, perhaps it really depends on turnout, but I still think this would be a likely red state. I don't really know exactly the specific number, but I'd be willing to say possibly seven or eight points, maybe nine points. Maybe a whole lot wouldn't change uh, in this situation because, again, you're, you're getting rid of the third party factor. So more... Uh, Third party voters would vote either for Biden or for Trump. It really would depend. Uh, Nebraska second. Uh, this is actually a seat uh, that congressional seat that Romney won by two points back in 2012. I don't think they have it here, but he did win it by two points in 2012. We can take a look. Uh, 
they do not, as far as I'm aware. Uh, but I do think this was a seat that Romney did win by two points, two or three points, perhaps. Um, I think Joe Biden would probably win it very narrowly. It, it's a close seat. This was actually a seat that went for Obama back in 2008. And I think Biden would probably win it in this scenario uh, very slightly. Uh, he ended up winning it by seven in 2020. Uh, but again, suburbs were redder back in 2016. People didn't really know what a Trump administration would look like. Uh, so I do think Biden would win it, but by a narrow margin. Uh, Minnesota would not nearly be as competitive as it was in 2016 in our timeline. Uh, Minnesota was one of the closest states in the country, a 1.5% margin for Hillary Clinton, one of the smallest margins for a Democrat in Minnesota in decades, I believe. Uh, I don't think it's been that close in a, in a long time. But nonetheless, uh, Biden is a much more popular Democrat. I think he would easily take the state of Minnesota by a likely margin, uh, maybe even like eight or nine points, maybe 10, but that's pushing it. I think Biden would do a whole lot better. Uh, in 2016, Biden certainly had a broader working class appeal, especially among the white working class. I don't think Trump's outreach to white working class voters would have been nearly as successful with Biden on the ticket. Now, I'm not saying Biden would, would landslide Trump necessarily, although that could end up bearing out. But I think in America itself, you're going to have close elections regardless, relatively speaking, you know, popular vote wise, all that. I don't think Trump would have only gotten 36 percent of the vote or something crazy like that. At the end of the day, we live in a climate now where most Democrats vote Democrat no matter what. And most Republicans vote Republican no matter what. And independents are kind of caught in the middle. And even independents have a partisan lean typically. So there's really not a whole lot of voters that are in the middle. Of course, in this situation, you'd probably have slightly more Republicans backing Biden just because he's seen as a more uh, sensible, moderate candidate, quote unquote, I guess, compared to Trump, uh, as some would think. Uh, the state of Iowa is, is difficult to gauge because in our timeline, Iowa went to Donald Trump by nearly 10 points. It was a pretty stunning victory. Uh, it's hard to think that even with Biden on the ticket, a better Democrat, that this would have happened. Again, Iowa had been trending red for a while. I think Donald Trump probably would have won the state of Iowa, but I think it probably would have been by a uh, probably a lean margin. I don't, I'm not really going to specify, but it would be pretty close. But I think Donald Trump would eke out Joe Biden in Iowa in this situation. Iowa's swing in 2016 seems to be a little bit too dramatic to indicate that even if Biden was on the ticket, uh, he would have been able to win the state. I know Iowa tends to be a very swingy state. It sometimes could swing wildly between parties, but I think ultimately Donald Trump's message would have resonated enough in Iowa to give him the state. Um, Wisconsin, we'll go to Wisconsin. Wisconsin was one of the closest states in the 2016 election. Uh, it was a 47 to 46 percent margin for Donald Trump. Uh, this was the first time Wisconsin had flipped since 1984 for the Republicans. Uh, and Trump largely did this because he ran up margins in rural areas, uh, dramatically so. Uh, the areas he performed weaker were in the Milwaukee suburbs, the Wow counties. Um, I think in this scenario, I think Joe Biden would probably win the state of Wisconsin by a lean margin, probably anywhere from uh, five to seven points. Um, if we go to the 2012 election, uh, Obama was able to win the state of Wisconsin by around a seven point margin. I don't think these, again, I don't think these numbers are wholly accurate, so I don't really know. It was around a seven point margin. I think we'd see something similar in the 2016 election. I actually think the suburbs in this case would be a lot, a, a, a decent chunk bluer, but I think some of these rural counties, specifically over here, would probably flip to Donald Trump as they did in our timeline, but not so much all of the Southwest swing counties. I think a lot of those would have stayed blue in this situation. Uh, Michigan, I think Michigan would probably be a likely state, although I, I think it would be on the lower end of likely. I think it'd probably be around a eight or nine point margin of victory. This was kind of at the height of, of uh, Joe Biden's, you know, working class appeal uh, type persona. And again, uh, these swings are very well possible. A lot of the reason Donald Trump won the 2016 election, I think the reason Donald Trump won the 2016 election was because his opponent was Hillary Clinton. When you have unfavorables, you know, in the 60s of percent, even on the lower end, we'll say 55 percent, uh, you know, you're not really favored to win uh, the election. It was only because his nominee was uh, the second most despised presidential nominee in the history of the country. Uh, 
the nominee was arrogant, you know, thought uh, she was going to win this race, you know, didn't really campaign in Wisconsin, I think at all in the general election, because she thought that state would be on lock. I don't think Joe Biden would have had the same uh, outlook, and especially with Obama kind of as a, a mentor to him, probably campaigning for him. Again, Obama was not unpopular in 2012. He was above water. Uh, I think his approval rating was above 50% when Trump won, if I'm not mistaken. So Obama certainly would have used his uh, popularity to try and benefit his vice president in this situation. I think easily Michigan probably would have went to uh, Joe Biden. Again, it would be a smaller margin than Obama because I'm sure Trump probably would have brought up NAFTA and other trade deals if he was still running the same campaign he ran in 2016. And that would have chipped away at the vote significantly. But I think ultimately uh, Biden would probably win the state by a likely margin. Ohio, I think Ohio would also stay red. Same with Iowa. Ohio was a, a state that shifted, again, pretty dramatically. We go to a, we go from a state that went to Obama 50 to 48, roughly. I think, it, I think the real number was 50.7, uh, to a state that goes to Trump 51 to 43. Now, again, third parties out of the equation. I, I think easily Joe Biden would have gotten around 47% of the vote. I think Trump his message would have resonated in Ohio. Ohio is a state that's red enough, politically speaking, that it would have actually probably flipped to Donald Trump in 2016, just like it did in our timeline. At least that's my opinion on the matter. I think, again, if Trump runs ran the same campaign, which we're going to assume he did, his message would resonate a lot in rural Ohio. And while the suburbs would trend more in favor of Joe Biden than they did for Obama in 2012, just based on the opponent, again, Romney did a lot better in the suburbs, but ultimately it wasn't enough because Romney didn't do well enough in the rural areas. Romney did better in places like Hamilton County, uh, which I believe he got 46%, but that didn't help him because these rural areas are light red. They're not dark red. They're not blood red like we're seeing in the 2016 election. You know, these areas are, a lot of these counties are only lean or likely Republican counties. That's the reason why Ohio went blue. Trump would still have massive rural appeal, even if he did slightly worse than he did in his current situation against Hillary Clinton in 2016. Uh, I think he would flip the state of Ohio by a lean margin, given those that information. The state of Maine, uh, Maine's second congressional district flipped by 10 points. Again, that's a super massive margin. I don't really see that changing all that much. I do think Trump would win it by a smaller margin probably around two, basically a tilt margin. But I still think the state of Maine's second congressional district probably would have been flipped, again, had he campaigned uh, the same way he campaigned in the 2016 election. Uh, moving on to the state of New Hampshire. New Hampshire, no shock. Uh, Joe Biden would probably win by a likely margin, probably around seven points, similar to 2012, I think. Again, they would have exchanged voters uh, Trump would have won more of the uh, rural vote, and Biden would have done better with suburbanites. I think a lot of, in a state like New Hampshire, the results probably would have canceled out. You wouldn't have seen a super close result like we did back in 2012. I think this was particularly because Hillary Clinton was very unpopular in the state of New Hampshire. Donald Trump was very unpopular too, but a lot of the third party candidates who would have voted for Hillary voted for Johnson, or they voted for Jill Stein. Uh, you wouldn't have seen that in this situation. And again, at this time, Joe Biden was much more popular than he is today. Uh, moving on down to the state of Pennsylvania, I think Pennsylvania actually would probably be the closest to the Rust Belt states. I actually think Joe Biden would win it, but I think it would only be by around a four point margin or so. I think Trump's, again, Trump's message would resonate in, the, in these areas of central Pennsylvania. Uh, he probably would have flipped Luzerne County, I think, even. Uh, in our timeline, he flipped Luzerne County by a safe margin, uh, 57 to 38, which is insane. <laughs> I think, honestly, Trump probably would have flipped it by a lean margin, maybe 52 to 46 or 47 or something like that. I think this county would have flipped. I think Biden would have done much better in Lackawanna County, which is home to Scranton. He probably would have won that by a safe margin. Uh, Monroe County, Dolphin County, and Center County probably would have been won by lean margins as they were in 2012. Ultimately, the state of Pennsylvania, even with the red areas becoming more red, blue areas would become more blue, and there would be slight gains, but I think Joe Biden probably would win his uh, birth state of Pennsylvania by four points, not his home state, 
He barely lived there, but he was born there, so he used that a lot while campaigning. The state of Virginia, a state we're not going to talk too much about, a state that was already blue, went to Obama twice, uh, definitely did not like Donald Trump, a very establishment, centrist, uh, center-left state, you could say, uh, at the time of 2016. Uh, in 2016, it was kind of a swing state, but basically everyone uh, knew that it was going to go to Hillary. Uh, it ended up going to her by around five points, 5.4%. Uh, in this scenario, I think Joe Biden easily could have won the state of Virginia by around 10 points, similar to how he did in 2020, uh, maybe nine points, but either way, it would have been a likely blue margin for the state of Virginia. North Carolina is actually really interesting because North Carolina was a state Trump won by almost four points back in 2016. He almost got 50%. Hillary Clinton did very poorly in this state. This was also a state that Mitt Romney won back in 2012. Trump won the state in 2020, but only by 1.3%. Uh, I'm inclined to say, again, it will be an odd map, but I'm inclined to say that Donald Trump would have held on to North Carolina like Romney did. But I think it would have been a very, very close state, around 0.5%. But I actually think Trump would have won North Carolina. North Carolina is, is similar to Nevada. It's a state that the other party always tries to win but never does. I think Trump would have held on in North Carolina. North Carolina is a very odd state, split tickets a lot. But it still is a red state. It's not a deep red state or a likely red state, but it is a red state. And I think ultimately Trump would have won North Carolina but by a pretty narrow margin. And it's, you know, it's kind of crazy to see a map, with, which we saw in 2020, in which Virginia votes, you know, 11, 12 points to the right of its neighbor, North Carolina, when back in 2008, it only voted to the right, I mean, the left, uh, about four or five points, almost doubling that. I do think North Carolina would have stayed red with Donald Trump in this situation. South Carolina, I think, would have been a likely Trump state, a high likely margin. I think Trump would have won it by 10 or 11 points. In 2012, Romney had won this state by about 10 points. 2016, in our scenario, Trump wins by 14. I think that's mainly due to the fact that Hillary Clinton, again, is not a popular nominee. Trump does about the same as Romney. He improves on Romney a little bit. But Hillary Clinton's the one who really loses in this situation. I think most stays the same in this scenario. I just think Joe Biden increases Hillary's margin by three or four points, putting it in the likely red category. Uh, Georgia. Georgia, I think, would actually stay red. Now, in 2020, the reason Georgia flipped, and it did by the narrowest of margins, is because of the grassroots action done by Democratic activists to register uh more and more voters, particularly black voters who have been moving there from uh, up north or had never voted at all. And this made the state a lot more competitive. In 2016, you didn't have this happening yet. Uh, Georgia demographically was still a state that was getting bluer slowly but surely. Uh, but I think in this scenario with Joe Biden, it would not have flipped. It did not flip in 2008, stayed red in 2012 by around seven or eight points. I think it goes to Donald Trump by around three points in this situation. Uh, you know, you would see counties like uh, Gwinnett and Cobb going blue. They would still flip to Joe Biden, and they'd probably go to Joe Biden by even larger margins. But Donald Trump still won the state by 5.1%. I think in this situation, he probably would have won it by two and a half to three, but I think he still would have won the state of Georgia. Finally, we go down to the state of Florida. Uh, this might be a shocking uh, prediction, maybe, but I actually think Joe Biden would have won the state of Florida by a tilt margin. At the time, Joe Biden was very popular uh, among senior voters. I think Donald Trump's rhetoric and actions surely would have turned off uh, seniors. Uh, this was a state that went to uh, Obama by less than a point. I think it was 0.9%. But I think Joe Biden certainly would have done well with the older white demographic. Donald Trump would have certainly done better in rural areas of the state. But I think it would have canceled out. I think Joe Biden actually would have won Florida in 2016. It was a very different time compared to what we saw in 2020. Trump was not the incumbent president. From 2000 to 2004, uh, Florida moved, I think, three points more Republican, as it tends to do for incumbent Republican presidents, as we saw with Bush and Donald Trump. But it was a different type of campaign. Uh, Joe Biden was 
probably viewed favorably in the state of Florida, favorably among seniors. And I think that would have benefited him him in the end. I actually think he would have won Florida by a narrow margin in this situation. And a win is a win. And it's a 308 to 230 election. Uh, You know, that's a sizable victory. Uh, That's similar to the victory that Trump won against Hillary Clinton in 2016, but the other way around. I still think Ohio and Iowa would have flipped uh, given this scenario because Trump was still a, a vigorous campaigner. He campaigned very hard and he campaigned on the right issues. He campaigned on trade, on, on a, you know, jobs going overseas. Those are very good issues to campaign on. I just don't think against Joe Biden in 2016, these attacks would have stick, uh, have stuck, uh, you know, on Joe Biden being for NAFTA and all that, given how Trump was viewed at the time, uh, you know, his style of campaigning, Uh, being a very, you know, tell it like it is, was very new and uh, for a lot of suburbanites, very scary. And I think they either, a lot of them would have either stayed home or some of them who were more independent leaning would have voted for Joe Biden. Uh, You know, you would have seen less Obama Trump voters in this election as a lot of them probably would have voted for Biden, even if they had uh, reservations about him. But ultimately, again, there's a lot of ways this could have went obviously alternate history and it's all my speculation, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a thumbs up. If you enjoyed, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification so you don't miss any new videos. If you disagreed or have any comments about this video, please leave them down below. As always, thank you all for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.